All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the uh, Creation Liberty Podcast, and show number 25 for February 6th, 2012. My name is Chris Johnson, the founder of Creation Liberty Evangelism, where our purpose is to win the loss to Christ and to teach the truth of science and God's Word. And we believe that God's Word is true and ac accurate historically and scientifically. Uh, we believe in the literal account of Genesis. The world was created roughly 6,000 years ago in, in six literal 24-hour days, just like the Bible says. Uh, we not only believe that evolution is a dumb theory, but we also believe it's a dangerous and destructive religion. That's our position. So if you're watching a recording from YouTube, you can always join us in live chat. That's every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's creationliberty.com. You just click on the link that says podcast, and you can join us there. And uh, tonight, though, we're going to be doing, we, we're at 8 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. tonight. We're going to have special accommodations, because tonight Josh from California is uh, joining us for a second time. Uh, in case you missed the first part of the discussion, you can always go back and uh, watch that on the website. You just click on the video section on our website. There's a link there that says videos and there's a screen at the bottom that has all our past shows available for you to watch at your leisure. So you can go back and catch that in case you missed it. So uh, now thanks to Josh and some other atheists emailing us, I was able to drastically simplify the chart that we used last time and I sent that to Josh a couple days ago and there is a link. If you're out on our website right now, there is a link right below the chat room. You can click on that and take a look at it. Uh, and if you're, you're not, if you're watching this from a, a recording on YouTube, uh, you can check the comment section. We'll have a link to it there. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice, I'm, I also need to mention I'm a little sick today. Uh, so my voice, I don't know how long my voice is going to last, but we'll go as long as we can here. Uh, it may not be as long as we were last time. Uh, but if you're watching us... Um, or excuse me, um, sorry, I got off topic there. Uh, Josh and I are going to be continuing from the last time we talked uh, on that episode. So, uh, Josh, welcome to the show. How's it going, Chris? Hey. Well, thanks for, uh, I, I know you had some work issues, and I really appreciate you uh, making the time for us this evening. Yeah, it's just a tricky time. I, I get out of class at 415, so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know it's different over it, there it in Cali. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, now last time we had finished uh, right in the middle of discussing how the atheists can know things for certain, and uh, I didn't know if you wanted to uh, start us off on that. Well, we can start off there. I, mean, I think that I was pushing you, if I remember right, on what you mean by knowledge claims, because it wasn't exactly clear to me, and you were making some claims about reason, and I had said... I don't know what you mean by reason. I don't think we're talking about the same thing. So I had wanted a definition there before we started the show, just so I know what foot we're on. Sure, and uh, the the definition I have uh, here, I was just looking at, this is just right off of dictionary.com. Uh, if anybody wants to check that out, they can. It just says, a basis or cause for some belief, action, or event, uh, a statement presented in justification of an explanation, or, or, or explanation, excuse me, of a belief or action. So basically, it's a, it's a basis for a belief or a justification for a belief or action. Okay. Um, that's fairly reasonable. Uh, Was that a joke? Point is that <laughs> the definition of reason that, is reasonable? <laughs> your point is that you want some sort of ju set of justifications such that what? I mean, you want some set of justifications well, that actually, that exist independently of God? All I really want to know is how the atheists, like, for, well, for example, from the atheist worldview, I mean, I take it that, you know, I mean, you have a, I'm, well, I'm assuming this, I guess, because I've never met an atheist that didn't believe in evolution. I mean, I assume you believe in evolution, too, right? Mm, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, th there are different issues within evolution. Though. There are different belief systems within evolution. You have the punctuated theories and unpunctuated theories and Mm -hmm. Stephen Jay Gould, and, I, and I'm not an I expert on those. I am not an evolutionary biologist, so. Well, I'm just—I'm not saying I, whether I, it's I a fact or not. I'm just asking yeah, for your beliefs. Generally, I accept. Generally, I accept those sorts of models of okay. human species development. So, from so, yeah. an atheist or or evolutionist position uh, that that you hold, how do you account for knowledge? Um. Well, what do you mean? I mean, knowledge is just by true belief. Well, no, I'm saying that, like, for example, uh, you know, last time you came on here, you were telling us about, you know, we were talking about the whole mathematics issue, and we went through a bunch of things like that. How do you account for, for knowing any of these things? Um, sure. So, systems to tautologies are true by definition, so they're necessarily true. They're true in all possible worlds. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't understand. You want an epistemological framework. They're, they're true because mm -hmm. they could not be defined 
in such a way that they would not be true. And for everybody else that's watching, in case you guys didn't know that, when he's talking about epistemology, that's it's the kind of like the theory of knowledge, the study of knowledge is what he's talking to. Um, but yeah, what I'm I'm looking for is, I mean, you have to have a, a you know, I guess a frame of reference. I don't know that you're that you're looking for. But the point is, if you're going to claim that you know anything, like how can you can you come on? Like if you came to the show today and you say you, you tell people that you know, for example, I know there is no God. Can you know there is no God? Well, I, I mean, for for any a posteriori claim, for any claim about the world, you're probably going to use a probabilistic model. Uh, this is why we were, uh, you know, I, I said one of my logic professors would beat me over the head because he's a, one of the people who created probabilistic logic. You're going to use systems that say, well, given that the experiment that we're doing, assuming that we want to construct an experiment, fails, then there's some reasonable probability that we're not going to justify our claim. Um, and we're going to have to account for that probability. You can be 99.99% certain. Now, the here's, here's the confusion, though, on I this. Scale that much, but based, on, based on what you said last time, here's the confusion on this. I mean, you had, you had said last time during the show that your brain was not 100% reliable. How could you verify any of those experiments? How could, you, how could you verify that your brain was working for those particular experiments? Well, because I, I use my brains in the ways in which it can, we can have a reasonable expectation of its reliability. So I, I, I don't do things like rely on things which I see in my peripheral vision because my peripheral vision is not reliable. I don't do things like rely on, you know, high pitches or extremely low pitches because those sorts of perceptions are not going to be reliable. So um, basically what you're I mean, doing I mean, is you're saying... Just empirical. If you want to say, is the brain 100% reliable, the answer is just no. And, and that's that's just a... A, a fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know anybody that would disagree with that. But the thing is, here's the thing. If and what I'm saying is, if your brain's not 100 percent reliable, there is nothing, and any of the things that you're claiming or that anybody else has claimed that you can verify. And I'm talking about from the atheist worldview specifically that you can verify any knowledge whatsoever. I, I don't believe that that's true. Well, I, I'm People not asking what you believe. About perceptual systems. Yeah, what you, the brain is the brain is a very complex thing. There are things in the brain that actually work, and there are things in the brain that don't, or that the brain can't do. Okay, hold on. Let's that. take that for example. What you just said: there are things in the brain that actually work. What did you use to verify that there are things in your brain that actually work? Uh, well, I used things like fMRI machines, which do reasonable studies on blood flow and the brain, use of the brain. And for those, I kept my focus, and the portions of the fMRI machine in the center of my visual field so that I could observe them properly, mm -hmm. construct an adequate representation of the brain. So, so you're saying that someone used their brain to make this machine, and you're using that to verify your brain. Is that correct? Sure. So but you're using the, the brain, brain to not, verify the brain. It's a single thing. The brain is a series of things. It's a collection of things. Yeah, but you're using the brain to verify the brain. You just said your brain wasn't 100% reliable, so how can you verify anything in your brain is true when you're because using your brain to analyze brain it? Because I have a reasonable expectation of reliability. A reasonable expectation is not, is not knowledge. Sure it is. The knowledge means justified true belief, generally speaking. Mm, no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Sure, you and I both agree that knowledge means justified true belief. Justifications no, 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 sir. Way that reasonable Wait a second. You're changing how people use the word knowledge in order to claim that you have knowledge. I, I don't. Changing the way that people oh, use the yeah. word knowledge. People have been using the word justified oh. true belief both inside philosophy and in common discourse. For See, this is something that centuries. No, no. Listen, you have to listen to this for a second, okay? If I were to, if I were to make the statement um, that there is, you know, uh, let me let me give an example right here, that I've got a clock up here. Okay, if I'm going to make that statement, you know, I can verify the clock is up there. I know it, and I state it with certainty. This is not a belief. There is a clock there, and I can verify that. Now, the thing is, when what you're saying is that people are trying to justify their own beliefs by saying this. You see, and that's that's the the difference between this. The average person, if you if we went on what you're saying, justified true belief, so to speak, of what you're saying, it's still a belief. If, we, if everybody used the definition of knowledge like you're using it, we wouldn't prosecute anybody in this country for any crime. 
Surely, yeah. No, would, absolutely I mean, not. And firstly, the court of law adheres to the justified true belief model. I mean, this is something that epistemologists that our founding fathers would have been well aware of wrote about, people like Kant, who I brought up last time. The justified true belief model of knowledge is, is about constructing what we refer to as reasonable justification. That's why I wanted to use the word reason. Mm -hmm. Say, well, what's a reasonable justification? A reasonable justification is going to vary based on the scale of the claim that you're trying to make. It's going to be sensitive to context. And here we back are again, though. You see, before we can even go into what you're talking about right now, you're taking somebody who has already used their brain that is not 100% reliable to make a model that you're analyzing with your brain. So how, do, how did you verify that you know, know even what you're telling us right now? Wait, wait, wait. So the model is the object of inquiry, not the brain. Oh, the brain is, because that's the source. The model came from the, from the mind of somebody, whoever you just named off right there. Which would technically be an appeal so, to authority, but I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to fight fine. you on that one. You, you really want to concede to me that 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 brains are the source of minds? If you want to make that concession, then this is going to be a, a very different conversation. The mind and the brain. I mean, it's all coming from the same same source. That's what I'm talking about. The same thing. When I talk about the mind and the brain, it's all coming from the same area. So, I mean, this is if, if it's something that you want to get specifics on what the difference between mind and brain, that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about how can you know things. See, you're trying to tell me that you know even that this person created this model. How did you verify that? Oh, like I said, I have reasonable justifications. I have what I accept to be reasonable standards. See, that's why we talk about justification. The reasonable justification, that was your definition of knowledge. You're saying, I know it because I know it. Do you think that's a legitimate argument to say I know something because I know it? I don't think I ever said that. Yeah, but you just used the definition you gave me of knowledge to say why you knew something. Won't you always... You, you made this claim last time that we're supposed to have any comprehensive understanding of terms without some construction of definitions. How could you how even know a definition? A, how would I be able to make a claim about knowledge without reference to a definition of knowledge? That how, would be absurd. No, how can you even know a definition? You're like saying I'm... I'd be, Definitions are tautologies. Yeah, but you see, no, necessarily see, true object. Ta and, and, whether, whether you want to claim it as a tautology or an axiom or whatever you want to claim it as, you're still claiming that you have knowledge of something. How did you verify this knowledge? What did you use? You the word axiom. An axiom is something entirely different. But 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 I need to make reference to what we mean by the word knowledge if I'm going to make claims about the word knowledge. You say, well, right now, are you eating a cake? <clears throat> And I do, and and I give you a justification which doesn't include the definition of the word cake. You would say, "How do you know it's a cake?" And I would say, "Well, then I have to make justification. Then I have to make reference to the definition." You still haven't verified, and it doesn't matter whether the person without properly defining objects. No, you so you're claiming to have the knowledge. I mean, even what you said right there, you're claiming to have the knowledge without ever having to give a justification for it. So how do you know that you knew those things? Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm attempting to give a justification of the knowledge. Without ever, without ever having given a justification for it. Mm -hmm. That means you're you're claiming that knowledge that's, can that's, only that's be the there. Sentence. I mean, uh, you, like for okay, let's take this for example. Last time you had talked to me, I, I went over this. Uh, I think just today. I can't remember if it was today or yesterday. I went over it. Um, you had talked to me. There was a point that I made a note, and I can't remember where it's at. Um, where you had asked me something along the lines of, "Can knowledge basically exist independently?" without anybody ever having to analyze it or things like that. Basically, it's asking, is there an absolute truth outside of the minds of man? And, I, and that, that was the basis of the question. That wasn't specifically what you asked me, but it was the basis behind it. And I, I said I don't know because I didn't understand what you were asking me at the time. But now, yes, I would have to say that absolute truth, at least according to the Christian worldview, absolute truth exists outside of the minds of mankind. Now, we can, we can verify our knowledge is true, we can verify what we know because there's an all-powerful creator that created our minds to be logical, and he created logic and reason, and we can, we can understand these things by using it. I'm not against using reason and, and knowledge and logic. I'm not against that. But the atheist starts by claiming it for himself instead of an outside source, and he's trying to explain the brain from within the brain, and that becomes the uh, logical fallacy. Okay, well, firstly, I don't know which logical fallacy it is you're talking about. And, well, it's circular secondly, reasoning I, or majority again, opinion. I don't know how you're two. going to have a discussion about what does, and does not qualify as knowledge 
without reference to what knowledge is, without reference to some definition. Exactly, and that's exactly what we're trying to discuss today. You see, to know something, if you look up the definition of know, it means to have the knowledge, I mean, it's to, to gain knowledge and you have it with certainty. It's something you verified with certainty that you know. Now, I'm asking how the atheist can know something when all he's doing is using his brain to verify what's in his brain, or just like you know what you told me, you you said that uh, it, at the beginning here, I wrote down these keywords which you were telling me. Anybody can go back and listen to the tape and replay it, or, or to this uh, video and replay it. That you were talking about vision, you were talking about pitches and sound, you were talking about things that you were using your senses to verify what's in your mind, and if you're using your senses to verify that your senses are valid, that's a, that's a circular reasoning argument. Well, again. Uh, petitio principii, which is the which is the fallacy of question begging, which is what Aristotle refers to as circular reasoning, only takes place in instances where what's being inquired into isn't the method. But how do you know that? The method can be the method can be internal. Well, my my point is you're getting the fallacy and you're misusing. It. But my point also is that when we, when we make use to reference to something like knowledge, firstly the word knowledge I've never seen defined as including certainty or requiring certainty. Okay, I'll just go look up for you then. Uh, well, I actually, just, I just read it yesterday. Definition right now: acquaintance with facts, uh, truths, or principles, as from study or investigation, general erudition, familiarity or conversance as a particular subject or branch of learning, acquaintance or familiarity. I see the word familiarity used over and over again. Mm -hmm. A fact or state of knowing, which is a circular definition, but whatever. Yeah. The perception okay. of fact or truth. Clear and certain material mental apprehension. You just said it. As of a fact. Of you, you just said it. Certain. Clear and certain mental apprehensions. There you go. It's certain. And this one, this the definition I'm looking at right here, it says to apprehend clearly and with certainty. So my, my question is, how can you know something with certainty? Like, how can you even know that you're an atheist? Well, how, how can you know something with certainty? There are things that you can believe with certainty. But again, how do you know something with certainty? Is exactly. Going to require a justification. Exactly. The there you go. You see, and what you're doing is all you're telling me, when you tell me you're an atheist, I mean, I agree with you what you just said. You're telling me what you believe. You're not telling me what you know. You don't know that you're an atheist at all. You're just telling me what you believe. And that's fine if you want to go off and believe those things. That's fine if you want to believe that you have that knowledge. But I'm saying that you're starting with, you don't have a justification for your knowledge whatsoever. And I, I find it amazing that, it, you know, uh, I, I've seen a lot of people that go off and they'll study for, for years and years and years through college and have all these uh, different degrees, but yet don't have a justification for anything that they claim they know. Uh, okay, so you, you haven't answered the core of my, my, my beef here, which is that... What's your question? Well, the, the concern was, how are you going to discuss something like knowledge without reference to a definition of knowledge? You wanted to remove my definition of knowledge, which is justified true belief, from the conversation. Because it, we could, no, I didn't want to remove it. I'm simply saying that what you're saying was incorrect. Even when you read it there, we were both verifying that it didn't have to do with certainty. It had to deal with, you know, what you believe. Knowledge is not based on what you believe because there's knowledge outside independent of what of your beliefs. If somebody so believes... So you have knowledge of things that you don't believe? Well, l listen to this. If you believed there was a limousine parked out, out front of my house, that doesn't make it true. That doesn't make it knowledge. That just makes it your belief. Okay. So it, can I mean, you have knowledge of a claim without beliefs about that claim? Can you have knowledge of a claim without beliefs of that claim? Can you have knowledge of a fact without a belief about that fact? Well, you can have you can know. I mean, basically, well, I don't know if somebody can believe the no, truth without you, knowing you it, but that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. You, you, you can't have knowledge without belief. It's a necessary condition. But it's irrelevant. You can't have knowledge without justification. It's a necessary condition. You can't have knowledge without truth. It's a necessary condition. It's, That's it's, where the justified true belief You can't have comes. knowledge without certainty. You, you, you can certainly have... Well, I, I mean, you, if, unless you reject the justified true belief model... I, if you reject the justified true belief model, then you can argue that certainty is required. But I certainly think that it's defensible to say we can have knowledge without certainty. Are you certain you think that? Am I certain that I think you can have knowledge? Yeah, are yeah, you I'm certain, certain of that? About my own thoughts. That's, okay, that's so you, that's something you're certain of. So you claim be certain about her own thoughts. And I you claim that you know your own thoughts. How did you verify that? It's internal. So, like I said, what you're doing is you're starting with your knowledge, with what you claim is your knowledge. You're starting with your brain. You're saying everything in there works 100% because that's what certain would be. You're now contradicting yourself. You're saying your brain does work 100%.
No, I, I never said that. Well, then, then you can't claim it's certain. Wrong. You can't claim that you certainly have knowledge, though. That's what you just did. You're, you're arguing both sides of this now. No, I didn't say that. I, can't, I didn't say you can't certainly have knowledge. I said that certainty is not requisite for knowledge. Go back. No, go back. You said, so I certainly have, think. And, and moreover, you can be certain and have beliefs. Josh, go and back, go back and listen to the video when you get a chance. This will be a recording on YouTube. You said, I certain, I think, and you said, I certainly think. That means you were certain of your thoughts, and you just verified and told me, yes, I am certain of what I think. And Absolutely. so you're telling me you're certain of the knowledge you have in your brain to even make those thoughts. And but absolutely. here but you I'm can't say certain of the knowledge that I have in my brain. Okay. And that's my that's the point that I'm trying to I'm trying to ask knowledge, you about. The knowledge of the contents of my brain. I'm, that's I the point I'm trying to ask you about. You uh, how did you verify that you have that knowledge? Well, and you said it was from your brain. You just told me well, let's set up, earlier. Let's set, up a little, let's set up a little experiment, Chris. Hold on, hold on a second. Let me finish this point. Okay. You said earlier in the, in the last episode that your brain wasn't 100% reliable. So what you're telling me is that you cannot verify anything that's in your head for sure, for certain, because you, you don't know. That, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, absolutely my, my it does. Is, the, the I, thing have is, knowledge, I have knowledge <clears throat> of the contents of my mind, the contents of my mind, my own beliefs. Mm -hmm. I have knowledge of those such that I'm certain that I hold those beliefs. How, but how did you claim, verify that? I, if, I, if, I, if I hold the claim, I know that I believe that X, that is a claim about which I cannot be mistaken. How? No, wait a second. How do, you, how do you know you can't be mistaken about that? What did you use to verify that you can't be mistaken about that? Well, I constructed a simple model. I said, is there any possible world in which I could hold the belief? I know that I hold the belief that X... No, you see, you're making the and same mistake. No, I set up an experiment. I said, let's let's do a thought experiment. Chris. We're, on, we're on TV. We're, we're, okay, well, we're well on let's go ahead. Go ahead. Let's, let's set up a thought experiment and say, is there some possible set of affairs, some conceivable set of affairs, in which the claim, I know that I believe that X could be false? The answer is there isn't. I mean, would you? Do, can you think of one? You're, if you well, can think of one, I would love to hear it. But you got to stop right there. You see, you're starting with your thoughts. You're starting with your thoughts already verified to even set up that calculation. To even set up the experiment. See, you're already you're already trusting the thoughts in your brain before you've verified that the thoughts in your brain are valid. That's exactly I, I what Renee. Yeah, I don't see how that's a concern. That's it's exactly the same mistake Renee Descartes uh, uh, started off when he started off said, "I think, therefore I am." He started with his own thoughts before he verified his thoughts were valid. <coughs> no, he didn't. He started with a simple rule about predicates. Where did he get those predicates he from? Started with a, he started with a simple rule about predicates. Where did he get the predicates true, from? Then it's the case that uh, that. My thoughts are valid. Where did he get the rule from? Is now now Rene Descartes believed what I asked you last time, which I, I don't think you actually got because when you re repeated earlier to sound right, which is he believed that the, the rules that he was dealing <coughs> with were properties of the universe. He believed that there were things in the world that would exist even if people didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Now that that's what he believed. So he believed that his rule about predicates was a thing in the world. That's fine. I believe that the axiom about knowledge is a thing in the world. Do you believe that the axiom about knowledge is a thing in the world? I don't know, but I will tell you this, is that the things that we know cannot you're be not, verified. You're not, certain, you're not certain about a definition? <coughs> How can you be no, I'm not sure, about I'm not sure what you're asking. With? I'm not sure what you're asking. You see, because what you're doing is still starting, Rene Descartes still starting, you said there's a certain set of rules and we verified if this and blah, you know, if this is true, blah, blah, blah. You're starting with the rules. You're starting with the thoughts that come out of your mind before you, and then draw the conclusion, auto, before you even begun the experiment, you drew the conclusion that your thoughts were valid and that they were true before you, and, and that they were reliable, that you could rely on them. You had justification for it before you even began the experiment. And I'm asking, how did, what, ex, you know, what, can, how no, can you verify? I'm doing, a stand, I'm doing a standard test for coherence. Which is something that all logicians do all the time in all their systems. Yeah, but you're not seeing what I'm Gertle saying. Did, Gertle did extensively. It's something that Descartes did personally. You're, you're completely as ignoring. And as, a, and as a philosopher. You're completely ignoring what I'm saying. Even what you just said, you completely ignored what I said. You're still starting with your own thoughts. 
you're still sorry. My thoughts are ver are reliable. So now I'm going to set up this experiment to make sure my thoughts are reliable. The, can you not no. see this? The, no. The question is, I wonder if my thoughts <coughs> are reliable. Let's see if they generate any incoherent conclusions. See, but the conclusions that you're coming to, you, it doesn't matter what conclusions you come to. You can call, you know, X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter what conclusions you come to. You still started with your thoughts verified first to even know that the experiment would be reliable. You don't know that that experiment's even valid for you to do because you're relying on your thoughts first before you've even begun. Again, I, I don't, I don't think that that makes any sense. I know you don't because it's, it's devastating to your worldview. Of course, you doesn't. You don't think it makes any it's, sense. It's, it, I don't think it makes any philosophical sense, and and my worldview is not particularly predicated on my atheism. My worldview would be perfectly fine with theism, um, personally. But I fail to see, firstly, why you think that circular reasoning is a fallacy. Mm -hmm. Because it's not in all systems, which is another thing that we talked about last time that you didn't seem to get. And then I, I fail to see why it is that tests for coherence are not considered valid. Because you're starting with your, okay, you're saying my brain has to work 100% reliable. Because if it doesn't, then I can't verify that whatever experiment I set up. I never said that at all. In fact, I, in fact, I have conceded to you I know. that the brain is not 100% reliable. L listen and closely. I've said this is an empirical testable fact multiple times. What, what, you're claim what I'm saying is that you're, I'm not saying that you said this, but I'm deducing from what you're already telling me, okay? Your brain would have to be 100% reliable because if it, if it was, then the experiment that I came up with in my brain to test to see if my thoughts were valid then that would be true because I can 100% rely on my brain. But you said yourself you can't. So whatever experiments that you're going to come up with, whatever whatever test thought experiments you're going to come up with, you're ver you've already in your mind verified said personally, my thoughts gonna, are you're verifiable. You're going to demolish your own Christian worldview if you keep commit, committing to the fact that the brain and the mind are mutually identifiable. When, believe me when I say you don't want to do that. Mutually uh, identifiable. Has to not do it to, in order to keep himself from getting destroyed. You have, to, you have to define what you, you mean also, if you're going to say you that. Also have to, you also have to keep in mind that you have to justify why question begging, why circular reasoning is a logical fallacy. Mm -hmm. Is question begging a fallacy in every system of logic? Okay. That's you, a simple question. Is, me, it, is, is it a fallacy in every system of logic? You're, you're you jumping ahead of where I we are. I can tell you that it's not. You're jumping way ahead. And I'll, I'll show no, you why. I'm, I'll, I'll show I'm, you why. I'll demonstrate to you. That something, which is a, something which is the foundation of your point is just false. No, is you're saying... False. It is just false that question begging is a legitimate logical fallacy when we're talking about formal representation. How did you it know it was... It is just false. Okay, hold on a second. You see, what? Uh, let me ask you a question. You believe there are logical fallacies, correct? Sure. Okay. How did you verify that something was a logical fallacy? What, based what on you, the rules of the system of logic in which it occurs. Where did the rules come from? Last time. Where did these rules come from? I just answered that question. No. You see, because what you're from doing... The proper rules, from no. the rules of the system of logic in which it occurs. Okay. See, you're, you're claiming that logic is outside and independent of the mind. Right? You're claiming there is an immutable yeah. absolute truth out there that can be known, right? Make that, and why are those two claims associatable at all? I'm sorry, say that again, you cut out. When did I make that claim, and, when are the, and why are those two claims associatable at all? Okay, you would have to, because if you're going to have a logical fallacy, you have to be starting with logic to begin with. You have to, you have to in your mind, say, well, my mind works 100%, and I know the logic then in my head is correct, in order to verify that you have logic to begin with, in order, in order to have any kind of logical fallacy. <coughs> No, I, my, my claim is not that all logical fallacies exist in all contexts in the world. That claim would be false. Why? Say that again. Sorry. I said my claim is not that all logical fallacies exist in all systems in the world, because that claim would be false. Well, then how could anything be a logical fallacy? 
How could you verify that based anything on the, was... Based on the rules of the system in which it occurs. Mm -hmm. Now, you're taking this rule set. Where did you get this rule set from? Do you, I don't think you're seeing what I'm saying. From your atheist pers perspective, this rule set had to be created from the minds of man. So how can you verify that any of that's yeah, valid when you said the brain... If you're a platonic realist about logic, and if you're a platonic realist about logic, then there are, like, really big problems. Okay, define what you mean by that. Explain to everybody else what, you, what, what you're talking about. Okay, well, if, if you believe that there is some absolute form that is a single system of form of logic that is absolute and applies in all contexts, then you're a Platonist about logic. Yeah, but define... That, that, that's, that's just... All you just true. did was repeat just, what you just said. You need to explain that to everybody so they understand what you're coming from. All you did was just repeat well, okay. it. Okay, so if you're... If you're, if you're if you believe that there are some rules of logic which apply in every case mm -hmm. across all systems, all conversations, all pieces of content, the minds and the world, everywhere, then you're a, plat you're a platonic realist about logic. Mm -hmm. And, and that's just, it, it's just not the case. Okay, it's yeah, and I'm not saying case. that everything applies all over the place, but here's, here's the problem. You can't, if it doesn't you're apply saying, everywhere all over the place. That everything applies all over the place. No, I'm saying, because logical, fa I mean, we have limited, that all over the place. we have very limited knowledge. I mean, we have a very limited perspective in this world. And that's what uh, a lot of people seem not to understand. And what I'm saying is that if you, if you can't apply these everywhere, I mean, how did you even verify that you can't apply them everywhere? Well, firstly, what are them? How do you know that you can't apply these everywhere? How do you know that you can't apply logical fallacies everywhere? By observing standard logical systems. And okay, by so by using your mind to do that, your brain? Standard logical systems. By using sure. your brain to do that? Okay, but you just said your brain wasn't 100% reliable, so how did you verify it? I didn't, I said my knowledge of content is 100% reliable. My, my knowledge of internal content is 100% reliable. Yeah, but now you're saying my knowledge is reliable, therefore my knowledge is reliable. That's what you're coming back to. Okay. Is circular reasoning a logical fallacy which exists in all contexts? Circular is reasoning is a logical fallacy that applies right here to what you're talking about. Because you're, you're starting with the knowledge. You're saying my knowledge is verified first before you've even begun. No, I'm saying... See, my worldview doesn't start with that. Begging, is question begging a fallacy which applies in all logical contexts? Do you believe that it's a logical fallacy that applies in all logical contexts? I don't know if it does, and that's irrelevant to this to this particular oh, topic. Not, because Absolutely, it's, because because if it's the case that it's not applicable in this context, then your entire argument is pointless. No. Absolutely not. And your entire argument is false. You're not. You're not seeing this at all, and I think I know why. I mean, because if you had, if you didn't, could not verify the knowledge that's in your head before you've begun, then you have no no justification to argue against a Christian who says we can verify knowledge because we have an outside source. Okay, you're gonna have to repeat that because that, that the Christian <laughs> worldview. Let me tell you the difference between the worldviews. The Christian worldview says, yes, we, can, we have knowledge, yes, we have reason, yes, we have logic, and we can rely on our brains to be able to deduce, deduce things like a mirage or something else like that because there is an all-powerful God, a perfect God, who created our minds to be able to reason those things out. However, the atheist worldview removes that from the picture, so they start by saying, my knowledge is correct, my brain is correct, therefore, my knowledge and my brain are correct. And that's, that's hopelessly circular. That's something that I, I absolutely cannot accept, and I don't know why you would. Okay. Is, is circular reasoning a logical fallacy which applies in this context? In what I just said? Yes. Yes. That's, it's why? a logical fallacy. Why? I, I, know, I know you'd ask why, because I just explained why. You can't say, uh, for example, if I took a tape measure, okay, I wanted to verify that I had a standard inch. I would go to the National Institutes of Standard Technology where they have the verifiable inch, it's you know, big, you know, safe they have it in where they protect it, it's made of titanium, all sorts of stuff like that. You go to the source where the absolute standard inch is. But what the atheist is doing is say, I want to verify this tape measure has an inch. So they fold it over onto itself and measure an inch to an inch on the tape measure and say, well, I guess, I guess it's verified, I guess we have an inch. That's exactly what, what's doing here with, with your brain. You're comparing a brain to a brain and saying the brain's valid. No, that's not what I've done. I've asked whether or not and why you believe 
that this is a legitimate logical fallacy to invoke in this juncture. I just why explained it to you. Why are you choosing to name this logical fallacy at this point, and why do you believe that it's one that's applicable? I and just that explained valid, it to that's you. That's a useful logical fallacy in this context. I just explained it to you. Now, I don't, I don't know if you just don't want to see no, it. You, you or, did or, it. Or, yes, absolutely. You didn't explain it to me. Absolutely, I did. I just explained to you what you're doing. You're starting with your brain and, and having, because you just said your brain wasn't well, you real. You just explained to me the portion of my system that you believe is circular. Why do you think that it's a rebuke to refer to my belief system as circular? Because it is circular. Now, I'm showing you, okay? That, that, if you start that's with your like brain. The, that, that's the problem. You're, you're saying it like it's self evident. The fact is, you have to give a justification for why you're invoking this logical fallacy. You uh -huh. can't do that. That's exactly what I'm my point. You. It's not even an invocation of a fallacy. You understand the you self evidence. You the rules of the system. You understand the self evidence. That's exactly what you're claiming with your own no, knowledge. No, you're claiming that it's self evident, you're... and I'm telling you, no, it's not. Explain to me why it's Then tell to me how you know things. That's all I'm asking. Tell me how you know things. I, I said I have absolute knowledge of mental content. Based on Descartes' claims, you have absolute knowledge. You have absolute. You absolutely of know. A very strict set of beliefs. Yes. What you did is you started. Now you're going to go back to Rene Descartes. You're going to go to an, into his calculation, just like what you said. He sets up an experiment to run. That came out of the brain, which you said is not 100% reliable. So your whole argument is is useless. You can't verify no. that for Again, us. Again, why is why the circular argument? vicious in this context. Why does that fallacy apply? Excuse me, say that again? Make, you have to make reference to some, some rule in the logical system which says that a circular argument is not admissible in this context. Well, how do you know you have to make a, a reference to a rule? For the same reason you have to make reference to a definition. No. Because without you have it. How do you know that, though? Did you, because otherwise you can't generate any of that. You've not proved to us that you have any knowledge whatsoever. You've not proved to anyone on this on this cast that you have any knowledge whatsoever yet. Well, I, I think that's probably unlikely, but given that, given that there are many, many people on this cast. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's important that if you can't give a, a definition, if you can't give a set of rules, then you can't generate... A logical fallacy, and if you can't give a set of exactly, rules this, exactly, if you can't give a set of rules that say the petitio principii that, that that circular reasoning is valid in this context, then you don't get to invoke it. Exactly, you can't just set up a set of rules and claim a logical fallacy without first verifying the knowledge of the person who's setting up these rules. And that's why I'm asking you how you know things for certain. You've claimed it multiple times that you have absolute knowledge, that you know things for certain, but yet you've not been able to demonstrate that to anybody yet. Because every time you give a calculation, you're starting by, ver by saying, my knowledge is reliable, therefore my knowledge is reliable when I, give up these, when I write down these experiments. Well, let's, let's start with something simple. Because, because we're, we're not getting anywhere with this. I know, because it's circular reasoning. That's my point. <laughs> well, I, perhaps on both our ends, but certainly on yours. Oh, well, certainly. The, the Explain to me the, the circular reasoning is, I'm using in the Christian worldview. How are you worldview. deriving circular reasoning as a fallacy? Do you believe that circular reasoning is always fallacious? Do you believe that it's always a fallacy? I don't know. I'm just saying it's it's fallacious in the, what you're presenting about claiming to have knowledge. Wait, 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 you don't know. You don't know if it's always fallacious. Whether it's whether it's always fallacious or not is irrelevant to the conversation. Okay, so you know it's irrelevant in this context. Irrelevant in this context. I'm telling you okay, that you're so you using know it's, a lot. You know it's in this you're using circular reasoning. Even last time, when you said, I mean, you're trying to also bring in, you know, you keep trying to say, well, we need to, we need to bring in definitions. Even then, you're arguing for majority opinion. I can quote you many times. I've got down here where you said, we if we will agree on this or agree on that. I mean, basically, what you're doing is trying to argue majority opinion, or or basically the whole thing I'm comes not back majority to majority opinion. I'm oh, arguing you did. Us agreeing so we can have a conversation. You, say, that again, say, whoa, whoa, say that again. Say whoa, say that again. We can't have a conversation. Say that again. So if you and I don't agree on our language, then we can't have a conversation. Exactly. We can't have a conversation with someone so if we can't agree language. on the source of knowledge, then we, then I mean, if you can't agree, if you can't find a source of knowledge that's reliable, then I don't even know why you agreed to come on here. If, if I don't have a source of knowledge that's reliable. Yeah, you just said your brain's not one hundred percent reliable, but you're claiming yeah. that your knowledge is reliable. I, I said uh, my brain isn't one hundred percent reliable. Can you does see a contradiction? The fact, does it follow at all from the fact that my brain is not 100% reliable, that I can't have knowledge of anything? 
What I'm saying is that you can't no, no, verify. Wait, 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 answer that question because that's a really important question. No, Does look, it follow? Listen to me I carefully. I told you this earlier. Listen to I me can't carefully. Have knowledge of any claim. Josh, listen to me carefully. I told you this earlier. I said your your knowledge. I'm not against using knowledge. I believe you do have knowledge. The difference between you and me is I have a reason to justify that knowledge, but as an atheist, you have no reason to justify it at all. So, so, so what you're saying is, if my brain is 99% reliable, I can't have any knowledge claims. What device did you use? What, what system or device did you use to verify that your brain is 99% reliable? So you believe that, that if the brain is not 100% reliable, that you can't have any knowledge claims. You can't verify them. I didn't say you can't have any knowledge claims from, but you, what you have to do, you have to borrow from no, the Christian no, no, worldview no. to claim because, those. Because it's, it's if, if that's the claim, that claim is just incoherent. That claim is totally wrong. Oh, of course you'll say that because it's devastating to your worldview, I know. No, the, the claim is just wrong. Oh, you can say it's the wrong fact, till you're blue in the face. The I'm just fact, saying that... Fact, well, demonstrate that it follows. Demonstrate that it follows from the claim my brain is 99% accurate. Therefore, I cannot have any Josh, you missed justified it. Justified beliefs. How did no, you verify I, I your brain is 90 How did you verify that your brain is 99% accurate? What, what, what was that? You, how did you verify your brain is 99% accurate? Are you going to admit that you used your brain to verify your brain was 99% accurate? Of course I'm going to use some part of my brain to verify that. That's my point. And accurate. you can't verify any of that for certain because the, the tool that you're using is not 100% reliable and you can't verify which part is or is not. Okay, and, and your, your clip is that without 100% reliability, you can't be justified in your beliefs. Exactly. You have to have a source of 100% reliability in order to be so able to I verify. So if I to you, Chris, that your brain was not 100% reliable, mm -hmm. would you say that you didn't have any knowledge? But you can't do that because your brain's not 100% reliable. <laughs> well, if I, said, if I said, if I demonstrated to you that your brain wasn't 100% reliable such that you believed it, and you believed My beliefs that, you are relevant. that your brain wasn't 100% reliable. My belief is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. No, no, no. It's not irrelevant. Yeah, it I is. I were able to convince you of that. Would you say that you no longer had any knowledge claims? It's irrelevant. How is that no, even so relevant? It's, it's Explain relevant. to how, how that's relevant to the just, conversation. Just entertain me on this one. If, if I did that, would you would you say that you had no knowledge claims? How are you going to convince me that my brain is 99% accurate that. with just, your... Just, just with, give me the counterfactual for a second. No, I'm asking how to do that. How would you do that? That's basically like trying to uh, claim that... No, no, no. It's, it's not. I'm just saying if, if I were to convince you of that belief, I just want an answer. If you can give me a straight answer on this, we can have a conversation. Well, you ask the question one more time. If, if I were able to convince you that your brain is not 100% reliable, would you still believe that you had knowledge? It's irrelevant again, because you can't. I can't answer so the you, question you, when, you it's, you when it's not possible. You necessarily that you have knowledge. That's like saying, let, let, me, let me tell you what you're asking. How would you, how would you verify, or excuse me, let, let me do this. Uh, if you had... Uh, like, for example, the law of non-contradiction. How can you prove the law of non-contradiction is wrong without the law of non-contradiction? I mean, that's basically what you're asking me. Well, you're firstly, asking there's me... No such, there's no such thing as the law of non-contradiction. I don't know why people can... Why, why these Calvinist apologists that I talk to insist on bringing it up. It, 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 just, it, it doesn't exist. Secondly... Um, well, we talked about that last time. I mean, this I mean, this eraser that I have in my hand, I mean, cannot exist here and where you're at at the same time. It's here. Uh, okay. But you can't know uh, that because your brain only works 99%. You that can't verify it. That the law of non-contradiction holds in all cases. Are you going to say that the law of non-contradiction holds in all cases? I don't know. You, you don't know? I don't know for certain, no, you don't know that, but I would see, say the, thing, the law of non-contradiction. You can't even defend that the law of non-contradiction holds in all cases, but you're willing to use it. Well, let me to think about it. Position, that's 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 really yeah. Just, the law of non-contradiction. Yeah, I would say yeah. Sorry, I had. Let me think about that for a minute. I had yeah. I would say yeah. The law of non-contradiction is something that actually has to be true. Okay, I mean, why do you believe that? Well, oh, why do I believe it? Well, good, great, excellent. I was hoping you were going to ask that because I believe there was an all-powerful God who made our minds to be reliable and to be able to know, and, be, and he created reason and logic and are, designed our minds to be able to work these things out. So from his word, so I what, can what verify logic, that there are things that are God absolute. Create? Excuse me? What logic did God create? What are the axioms of logic that God created? Oh, the axioms of logic doesn't matter. 
The logic yes, can be verified. You said God created logic. What axioms of logic did God create? God can be, oh, look, God writes down his word. It's infallible, it's true, we can prove that, okay? And he created our minds to be logical, all right? Now, we can, we can uh, discuss the parameters of that, and we can make, like you said, the rule sets and different things like that, like you gave the example of chess last time and things like that. Now, we can verify those things, okay? But you can't verify it unless you have the God to begin with, who's the outside source who, ver who verifies that our minds are accurate. What system of, what, what are the axioms of logic that God gave us? Why would that even matter? It matters because you're making a claim that the law of non-contradiction is a property of this system that God created. Mm -hmm. What are and there are there are systems of logic. I'd be happy to get to that, that but we that haven't even got to the point. The law of non-contradiction. We have So if you're going to claim, firstly, if you're going to claim that it's necessary, you have to defend yourself against basically the existence of several fields of logic which say that you're wrong. The fields Second, of logic. I mean, you that's... have to you have to say that logic is a property of the universe. And you have to say that your logical systems will apply in all cases. When you're bringing Again, up the fields, the wrong. fields that you're talking about, that's an illogical fallacy, ad populum, and an appeal to authority. Mm, and I'm sure. telling you, I'm telling and, you, and, you and have what, no. And what rules are you going to make reference to, to suggest that there are logical fallacies in this context? Oh, like take for appeal to authority, for example. It says the Lord is not respecter, of, is not a respecter of persons. You can read that in the Bible. You can go look that up. I can look it up for you later if you like. But he's not no, a respecter no, no, no. of persons. Saying, this saying, is this would come is... to the appeal to authority. When you appeal to mankind's authority, that is not uh, 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 a logical thing not, that you can bring to the table. Me. I said, what rules are you making reference to? I just what gave you an example of one. I just gave you an what example of one. Of a system of logic generate these things as fallacious. I just gave you an example of one. Now I, you may not like but, the but example, an and you can logic? you can not you, you can, can not yeah, like the example if you want. Well, define. You're going to have to tell me specifically what you want then. I mean, I can't give you something that, you know, I don't know what you want. Okay, so, so an axiom of logic is something like, if P, then P. That would be an axiom of logic. What are the axioms of logic that God gave us? I'm sorry, well, that, those kind of equations I'm not going to be able to give you, because it's irrelevant to the issue. No, it's not irrelevant to the issue. You made a claim that God gave us something, and I think that that's just false. Okay, you can think it all you want, but you, you see, your brain doesn't only works 99, like you said, it's only 99% uh, relevant, or excuse me, not relevant, 99% uh, verifiable, so you can't tell even if what you're thinking is true or not. Again, you have not demonstrated that that follows. In fact, you refuse to grant me oh, the basic thought experiment to even start You don't even, discussion. you can't verify that I didn't demonstrate it. You don't have a, you don't have a, a, a source for knowledge. Really? Because we've got YouTube. But no, YouTube, YouTube is your resource, YouTube, for, resource for knowledge? For knowledge. Or, uh, I hope you were yeah. joking about that. <laughs> well, we'll see. So you say something like, you believe that the law of non-contradiction is necessarily true. Oh, yeah, but you see, you couldn't verify it anyway, because you don't have a reliable source that you can verify it from, but except for okay. the hopelessly so circular gonna, argument that my, I, I think that my brain is valid. You. I'm sorry? You have to repeat that. So, so you're going to discount any source that I could possibly give you. Well, you haven't given me any any uh, justifiable knowledge yet. I haven't given you any justifiable knowledge. No, sir. Okay. But would anything I give you qualify as knowledge? Well, I'm asking Is you there how... Is any conceivable object of knowledge that I could give you? Any conceivable knowledge that you could give me? You can give me tons of knowledge. And I'm not, I'm not discounting... Look, you keep, you keep coming back to this. I'm not saying you don't know things. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have no justification for how you can know things. So why you would go to other people and tell them that you know things really blows my mind. Because you, you can't verify that. I can't verify that I know things. Yeah, I can from the Christian okay, worldview. Okay, so in order, to, in order to verify that I know things, I have to make reference to other things that I know. That's what you're doing, though. You see, no, I'm saying you're, that's, using, that's your, you're starting with your knowledge first. Your claim is that in order for me to justify that I know things, I have to make reference to other things that I know. That's exactly what you're doing. And that, that's my point. So that's your, that's You're your, trapped your, in this circle. Is there, is there a way that you can do something other than that? Yes. You can, go to the, you can go to the one that knows everything in the universe to verify that your knowledge is valid. How do you know that he knows everything in the universe? Ah, is it, okay, let me ask you this question. Is it possible that an all-powerful God can reveal some things to his creation, either you know, via their brains or not, he can verify that uh, by, by the brain or outside of the brain that he can uh, ver he can send them knowledge that that is verifiable. Is that a possibility that an all powerful God could do that? I don't know. Is Descartes' demon logically possible? It, it, that's irrelevant to the question. No, it's you see, not. I'm referencing if, if to an all powerful God. 
You're then it's not possible that, they, that that could happen. Right now, you're comparing Rene Descartes to God by asking oh, that no, question. I'm comparing Absolutely. Descartes' demon to God. Absolutely you are. And that's my, that's my point. Descartes' demon to God. <clears throat> and I'm saying if, if Descartes' demon is logically possible, then what you've just described could never constitute knowledge. Then how do you know that? So you're coming back and telling same, me that you way, know certain things. You and, and again... No, no, it's not the same you way. Say that I, you say that I know things. Well, what things do I know? Well, I, I can... T I, like, for example, I can verify that you're a human being that we're talking to you right now, that we're having this conversation, that we're using the English language. I can verify all those things because I have an outside source I can rely on to verify that information. However, you've not given me any reason yet why I should trust you on anything that you talk about concerning knowledge if we're going to work just simply from the atheist, atteistic worldview. It's hopelessly circular. I know okay, things because and, and, of my knowledge. Your, your That's what you're telling me. Your argument is not hopelessly circular. No. Okay, how is your argument not hopelessly circular? Again, we have the all, ver we have the all powerful ver verifiable knowledge we can go to to verify that our brains work. Okay? And how do you know that that knowledge is all-knowing? And how do you know that it's going to give you what you want? Because God revealed it to us in his word. So you're appealing to revelation to justify that your revelation is reliable? No. I'm appealing to his word because his word, his revelation is good whether I realize it or not. His, his, his okay, word is perfect his outside, that his revelation is reliable. outside of your mind and my mind. His revelation is reliable and it is, it is revelation whether we acknowledge it or not. That's an absolute source that can be gone to, okay? And, and how do you know that? How, how do you know that? You can go and verify it. Check out the prophecy. Check how, out, I mean, 30% of that book is prophecy. That? What? And what did you use to verify that? To verify the prophecy? I used, I used my brain to verify this because God and created it for me to do that. Is reliable? Through the through the Lord, that's the whole point. You go to the absolute and, and you source. you just went in a giant circle. No, I didn't because I gave you the same answer for each one. And it wasn't no, for you me. You said, it I wasn't said, for how me. How did you verify that the, the text is reliable? And you said, because the text has prophecies, and I checked the prophecies, and I used my senses. It, exactly. And to I, check the prophecies. And God and revealed that to me. I, I went back, and in order to check that my senses were reliable, I went back and I used the text, because the text tells me that my senses are reliable. Yeah, and the and Lord reveals that to, to God, people. And God said, you'll go back to the text, because the text tells you that I'm all powerful mm -hmm. and all benevolent. And the text is reliable because of revelation. And then you're back at square one. No, because you're at you're back to the source. You see, he reveals things to his creation either via their senses or apart from their senses. Okay, and whether or not we ver we we understand them, if I if I went and understood it or not, it's still good. It's still absolute knowledge. So I'm going back to a source. You're not going to a source. You're saying I know things because I know things, and that's hopelessly circular. No, you're saying you know things. Because God revealed them to you. Exactly. And that's I'm not circular you know reasoning. That's not God circular reasoning. To you. That's going I to a verifiable that source. That's revealing them to you will gen generate knowledge. And you said, because the revelation is good. And I said, how do you know that the revelation is good? You appealed to the legitimacy of the revelation, which you got from your senses, mm -hmm. which you got from God. That's a process I've done. From the text. But you missed what I said. You got from revelation, which you got from your senses, which you got from God. So I, I, I'm, I'm following this. And I'm walking around, and I don't know how to get off the Mobius strip. And it sounds like neither do you. Uh, neither do I. You, you've just told me you don't, I mean, you, you basically said, I know things because I know things. I mean, I, I don't understand basically how you can I, accept that. I know that. things because God tells me, and I know that I can trust God because I know things. <laughs> and that's no. not any less certain. God's revelation, like I said, is good whether I understand it or you understand it or not. It's still good. Okay, but, but, but the only reason that you can have knowledge claims, justification for knowledge claims. And even if I go back and I yes, use my senses really, to do this. The only you can have justification for knowledge claims is if you know that. I can and verify my senses. That is if you defend it with the authority of the text, which you have to defend with your ability to garner knowledge claims. You're, you're mm -hmm. going to walk in this circle here, too. No, absolutely is, not. The difference is, the difference is, I'm aware of when question begging applies and when it doesn't. How do you know that? You still haven't told us how you know that. Through, through the definitions, through the rules of the system. Through your brain. My brain tells me that my brain works. That's exactly well, what you, you just said. Firstly, you don't believe that the, our brains are generated the rules of the system. Excuse me? So, you, do, you, do you believe that our brains generated the rules of logic? No, I'm coming from your worldview. This is what you... I'm talking about what you believe. 
I didn't talk I about what I was believing. That our brains are what generated the rules of logic. Oh, yeah, but it, that's exactly what did. Somebody had to think of it. If you just said you believed in evolution, well, some way, or some along, some way along the line, somebody had to think of this. It came out of the brain. Not, no. <laughs> so how did, how did they come about? Did they just no. evolve from ink and paper? Well, you, you think that, that the only laws of logic are the ones that are written down. You don't think the laws of logic are properties of the universe. Well, how can, they, how can you even know their properties in the universe? How, how can I know that their properties are the universe? Yes. How do you know that? Through observation. So how do you know that your senses are reliable to observe this? How do I know that my senses are reliable? Yeah. Well, they're not. Um, well, then you just you admitted that you don't know for certain what you're talking about. You just admitted it, Josh. I, I don't know. I don't understand. I mean, if you want to deny I, that you I, admitted I, I it, that's I fine. I you know, that my senses will work in particular ways. If, you, if I'm not, a, if I'm not a, like a human, like radical skeptic or anything. Uh, I'm just I saying, if you wanted, anybody can go back and watch this video and see what you just said. If you want to, admit, if you don't want to admit that that you know you, you don't have a way to verify this, that's okay. You don't no, have actually, to. That's not no, a requirement my, my of the show. Is, my point is that that even if I conceded to you that the reasoning was circular, which I don't, and I, I think that you're overlooking a lot of great great literature and philosophy, and you should go back and you should look at foundationalists like Descartes and read them seriously. So even if you, even if I, even if I grant that claim to you, you have no grounds to claim that question begging and circular arguments are fallacious. Oh yeah, I do. Don't, don't know enough about logic to. But see, you haven't verified any anything that any, there can be any logical fallacy whatsoever. Because you, when you just said that you looked at the laws in the universe, I said, how did you observe it? You said through your senses. I said, are your senses reliable? You said no. I'm sorry, okay. you're you're stuck. I, on I just this asked one. you how you could know that question begging is reliable and. You've demonstrated that you don't know what question begging is. There is an so, all there is an all powerful God. Look, I, if you want me to go, look, I'll I'll tell you what, we'll go to this real quick. Uh, let's see here, begging the question. Let's see here. I just had it up on the screen just a little while ago, and you know what? Now I've lost it. You know, I'll have to go look it up later. Begging the question, I have to remember exactly because I couldn't give you an exact definition of begging the question. But well, basically, let me, let me, if you want to, give, okay, go ahead, go ahead. So we'll take a few more minutes. Go ahead. The fallacy of Petitio Principia is committed when a proposition requires proof is assumed without proof, or more generally to note, when an assumption is used in some form of very proposition to be proved as a premise from which it is deduced. That sounds exactly okay. like your position. That sounds good. That sounds good to you, right? That sounds exactly like your position. Okay. The proof is already assumed. That's that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, no, the let proof me, is. Let me read you what, what, a, what a great logician once said about about, about this. He says. One sees that, that the necessary, that the necessity of the recognition of petitio per KPI is a sign of the intellectual and ethical incompleteness of man. Why? We're incomplete because we're capable of constructing knowledge claims without it. Without How do you know we're incomplete? Them. How did you verify we're, we're incomplete? Of, committing them, of, of, of doing it without committing them. I'm incapable of doing it without committing them. The reality is it's not. How did you a verify that? That's applicable. It's not a fallacy that's applicable in a foundationalist context. How did you verify that's that? That's the lesson about logic. It doesn't you're, matter. You're not answering. Because it's not a verification. Whoa, wait a second. It's you said it doesn't matter how you verify it? No, it's a foundationalist. Fact. That, there, thank you. That tells me about everything I need to know. That it doesn't matter how you verify it. You just want to believe it. And that, that's fine. You're no, welcome it, to believe it, whatever actually, you want. That's not what it right? says, but... but it was, it was nice. I mean, well, yeah, and I, I, you know, I appreciate you coming on the show and doing this, you know, and I really do appreciate it. And I, you know, I just, you know, before we go, I just wanted to, you know, uh, ask, you know, to let you know, th this isn't personal, you know, it's not, a, it's not a personal attack on anything. I hope, I hope you don't take it that way. No, I don't take it that way, but, but I, I do have, I do have this concern, which is that what I, I think I actually asked you to define last time was logic and not reason. And, and I, I think that the... Oh, you go back and watch it, it was reason. You really, I think you really don't understand logic. And okay, you can you believe that. If you want to go back and you want to look at something like Petitio Principia, and you want to go back and look at these fallacies, you have to make a decision about whether or not they apply. And like I said, you're starting with the assumption that these, all these things are logical and that you have logic before you come no, to the conclusion that you and, have logic. And, and again, this is why I wanted you to define it beforehand, because if you define it beforehand, you understand that the claim X is logical is actually something that's a colloquialism that doesn't make any philosophical sense. But, again, that's not the point. The point is that you 
need some level of either foundation, in which case you're not going to give a justification. In your case, you don't want to give a justification. I don't know why you did when I asked for it. Oh, what do you mean I don't want to? I just did. Uh, I don't know I why you'd say that, but... People but Josh, who are you know, in look. theology and in theistic epistemology don't want to give justifications. Plantinga doesn't do it, lots of people don't do it. And there's a reason why, because you get led around like I did earlier. Um, and I apologize for setting you up for that. But well, anyhow, Josh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to cut anyway, this off. Okay. And I, I, I do I still I you know it's like, like I said nothing here is a personal attack, and uh, I, pr I really do appreciate you taking the time to come on tonight. All right, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, well I'm I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just making sure I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and hang up with you now, okay? But I hope you have a good evening. All right. Yeah. All right, take care. All right, guys. Well, that'll be it for the show tonight. Uh, let me take a couple minutes. I don't know if I have any time to address some of the questions and comments from the uh, chat room. Um, like I said, you guys can go back and verify some of the things from the last uh, podcast episode we did with Josh and uh, take a look at what's there for yourself. So I'm um, going through here. Let's see if we can look at a couple of these before I get done. Um, Let's see here. Caleb said, if you don't know for sure that I'm writing this, then you can't know anything. That's the point. It doesn't matter whether I back my knowledge uh, in this statement up. I can't. That's, that's exactly correct. And that was, uh, Caleb understands exactly what I was trying to get to. You have to even, uh, how do you know for, for certain that your thoughts, that you're thinking in your head are, are real? How do you know for certain that you can trust any of that information? Of course, even if you believe that evolution is true and that you're just a bunch of chemicals that washed up by random chance on the beach, how can you verify even that? In anything that you're thinking, you know, if that were the case. Uh, let me get to some other ones here. Uh, let's see here. Somebody claiming uh, logical fallacies. Um, you know, here's a guy. I think, I think this is another one of the atheist people. He says, you just committed a straw man fallacy. Well, how do you know that? I mean, you can't, <laughs> you can't verify fallacies unless you have uh, something to go on. Uh, besides, I mean, because like I said, uh, Josh's, Josh's argument was, you know, I, uh, I have knowledge because I have knowledge. That's basically what it came down to. I mean, go back and listen to the tape and listen to what he said. Um, let's see here. And then, here it says, by claiming logic is one thing, you also show a lack. Uh, this is by a guy named Jack314 on here. By claiming logic is one thing, he says, you also show a lack of education regarding philosophical logic. Okay, well, that number one is ad hominem. I mean, that's trying to discredit the person. Uh, re referring back to philosophical logic, that's also appealing to authority. You're appealing to philosophers throughout history, and that also appeals to authority. Authority, both logical fallacies, but again, you can claim those because you don't have any verification for knowledge anyway. So you can just say things out of your mouth that don't make any sense whatsoever, and you'd never be able to verify it. So, anyhow, that's, guys, that's about all the time we have, and that's about all the voice I've got. I'm, I've been pretty ill tonight, and I don't have enough voice left in me. So, for those Christians that are out there, I hope you guys will pray for Josh. I think, you know, if he will uh, take the time to really consider this issue. Uh, that, you know, I think the Lord will, uh, will help him. And I think, uh, you know, we ought to be praying for Josh that, he, that, that God will help him see, you know, our Lord Jesus Christ would help him see exactly uh, what he needs to see to understand the foundation of knowledge. And that's in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 25. And also in Romans where it says no one seeks after God, you know, uh, God has to give them an acknowledging of the truth. So, um and we should be praying for those people. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys will uh, enjoy that. I hope you got something out of it. Whether you, you like me or hate me, whatever it is, I hope you got something out of it, and you guys can use that for whatever you uh, talk about in the future. So uh, join us next time. I think the next show, let's see here. It's going to be show number 26 on February 13th, I think. And uh, I haven't got too much planned for that, I not yet, but I have something coming up that I think we're going to run over that will be real interesting next week. So... Anyhow, you guys all have a good night, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.